Whenever you're given a right triangle, right just means that it has this little box here. That means 90 degrees. And if you know two of the sides, six and eight, but you want to find the third side, you could always use Pythagorean theorem. We just want to label what are the sides A, B, and C for our triangle. Well, let's go ahead and copy the same one over. The trick I like to use, this little box kind of looks like a backward C. So opposite of that is always going to be the length C. That's the same thing as the hypotenuse or the longest side of the triangle. Then the other two you could label A and B, but it doesn't matter which one you call which. I just like to make B the bottom because it's easy to remember. Okay, but looking at our picture, we can see 6, that's going to be A, let's put that. And then 8, that's the same thing as B. But we don't know what C is, that's the thing that we're solving for. So we'll just leave it as C. Next, we're going to replace the letters in Pythagorean theorem. We're going to change A to 6, B to 8, and then just leave C since that's what we're solving for. Let's do it. Next, we want to find out, well, what is 6 squared plus 8 squared? Because that's going to give us a number right there. If you see it, that's great. But let's go ahead and use the calculator they give us. You could just type in 6, and then the squared button is right here, x squared. But you could do the whole thing, so plus 8, and then the squared button again. Okay, 6 squared plus 8 squared, that gives us 100. So let's go ahead and put that in. Then we're just going to drop down the c squared. Now you may be thinking that we're done here. c is 100. But notice that's what c squared is. And we just want to get c. So we don't want this squared right here. The way that you're going to do it, you'll always square root both sides as the last step for these. Because the square root and the square, they both cancel each other just leaves us with C right here. And notice, 100, that would be way too long for this side. So by square rooting it, it's going to shrink it down and give us the real side length here. OK, let's use the calculator again. To do the square root, it's this green button right here. Just do second to get to it, and then x squared. OK, then square root of 100, and enter. Okay, 10. Let's copy that. But that's it, because C, that's the length right here, 10. And that's the one that we were trying to find. So we solved for X by using Pythagorean theorem to get the missing side length here. If you're like, I don't even know what just happened. Well, let's do a very fast recap and a way to check our answer. Pythagorean theorem says A squared plus B squared. Same thing as 6 squared plus 8 squared. Let's go ahead and do that again. 6 squared plus 8 squared, and enter. So we know that the left side of the equation here is equal to 100, but that should be equal to c squared. And c is 10. That's the side length. So 10 squared. And they are equal. So we get a squared plus b squared is 100, it's equal to c squared. That's also 100. That tells us that 6, 8, and 10, those are the three side lengths for your triangle here. So that's it. Pythagorean theorem, it's just a way to find a missing side length for any right triangle. Once again, we have a right triangle. We're trying to find a missing side length. Let's just copy over the triangle itself. Okay. A and B, those make up the 90 degree, but opposite of the 90 degree is C. So C is 29 in this case. But we also know the bottom B is 21. We want to find out what is X or A for this triangle. Well, we're always going to go ahead and replace the letters here. So B will replace with 21. C, we'll call that 29. And then go ahead and copy that. At this point, we want to find out what is a squared, but let's go ahead and find out what is 21 squared and 29 squared. Let's just expand this out a little bit. We'll go ahead and clear. By the way, 21 squared, it's the same thing as 21 times 21. So notice both of those give us 441 there. Okay, and then what about 29 squared? 
841. So we'll replace that with 841, that with 441. Let's go ahead and do it. But this is a little different than the last one. Notice in the first problem here, we already had c squared all by itself, so it was already isolated. For this problem, we want to isolate and get a squared by itself. In other words, we're going to go ahead and solve the equation for this guy here. To do that, just draw a line where the equal signs are. And to get this by itself, we don't want 441 right there. The opposite of plus 441 is to subtract 441. Whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you're going to do to the other side here. Okay, let's find out what this gives us. Well, these two guys cancel, they zero out. Then just drop down a squared right here. On the right side, 841 minus 441. That just leaves us with 400. But you know what to do. We want to get a all by itself. We don't want the squared. So once again, the last step is always to square root both sides here. We'll go ahead and use the calculator again. We'll go ahead and clear. And then to get the square root, you're just going to type in second and then x squared. That's how you get that green button, the square root, to show up there. Okay, then just type in 400 and boom. So A, that missing side length here is 20. And let's go ahead and label that for our diagram. So the missing side x right here is 20. And that's the final answer for this one. So this side length is 20, this is 21, and this is 29. Even if they don't look like they're the right size, it does work. It's just the picture is not drawn quite right. So don't worry if the picture looks a little off there. But really quickly, let's double check our answer. Let's go ahead and do a squared plus b squared again. That's going to be 20 squared plus 21 squared. Let's see what that gets us. 21 squared. Okay, 841, that should be equal to c squared. We know 29 is c. We'll square that. And sure enough, they are equal. So finally, this tells us that 20, 21, and 29, those are the three sides for this right triangle. So they fit perfectly together here. Alrighty, let's check out another one. This time, the picture's drawn a little bit differently but just go ahead and copy it over. But just use our trick, find the 90 degree, and opposite of that is always gonna be C. So C is 15 here, let's put that in. The bottom B, we actually don't know that, we'll just leave it as a B. And then A, the side, is gonna be 11. Next, we're gonna replace A with 11 right here, and then C, that's gonna get replaced with 15. Let's go ahead and show that. This is where we'll go ahead and square everything first, but 11 squared, same thing as 11 times 11, that's gonna give us 121. And then 15 squared, that'll be 15 times 15, 225. So we could use the calculator, but we'll just go ahead and show that instead. Once again, we wanna isolate, we wanna find what is B. So we're gonna solve this equation. And once again, I have a video on solving equations if you wanna see what that process is like. Let's draw the line down the equal sign. Wanna get B squared by itself, but we have plus 121. We'll do the opposite and subtract 121. And we'll do that to the other side. Okay, the reason that works, this minus this, that becomes zero, or we say it cancels. Then you can drop down the B squared, and you could use the calculator, but 225 minus 121, we get 104 there. But again, if you're like, okay, I think that's the answer, well, just look at the diagram. If this is 104, this is 11, and this is 15, that one is way bigger than the other sides, so that can't quite fit in the triangle there. In other words, we need it to be much smaller, so we want to get b, not b squared. Therefore, that's the last step. We'll square root always to get the answer to be smaller. Let's go ahead and do that here. Okay, clear, second, square root, and we're gonna do 104. Okay, this time it gives us something weird. 
but we want to get a decimal answer, just use the button above enter. Well, just imagine this is money. It's $10 and 0.198. It's about $10 and 20 cents. So we could call it 10.2. And that's B, the missing side length here. We'll go ahead and label that. That's the value of X that we were after. So the missing side length, 10.2, and that's all for this guy. Because we got a decimal this time, we might be a little hesitant if this is actually correct. So let's go ahead and verify just to see. Okay, we see that A is 11, so we'll do A squared, plus we solved for B, 10.2, and we'll go ahead and square that. Okay, so what does A squared plus B squared give us here? 225.04. Is that equal to C squared? That would be 15 squared. But notice they're actually not exactly the same. They're very, very close. This one's a tiny bit bigger. Because we rounded this one up just a smidge, and that made it a little bit bigger than 225. But if we didn't round this one and kept it as is, then these two squared together and added would have added perfectly to 225. So if you have to round, just make sure that they're pretty darn close and you'll be fine there. Okay, but what's the application? When would you ever use these things? To find the screen size for any device, it's determined by the diagonal of a screen. That's the dotted line. Now, a diagonal, it always goes from one corner of a screen to the opposite corner. That's the screen size, whatever that length is. To the nearest tenth of an inch, what is the screen size of this tablet? Now we know we want to find that length right there, but we do have a right triangle if we just look at that bottom part right there. Okay, then we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. We have two of the sides. We want to find the third side. Go to the 90 degree. Opposite of that is C. Let's label that. And then B is the bottom, and A, the right side. A, 6.5. B, 8.9. But even if you're dealing with decimals, you could still use Pythagorean theorem to find the third side here. Okay, let's do our substitution. A, 6.5. B, 8.9. This is exactly like the first problem that we did. We could square these individually, add them together, or just do it all as one step. Let's go ahead and do that. 6.5 squared plus 8.9 squared. 121.46, let's add that in. Okay, so that's C squared. Last step, we know we're going to go ahead and do our square root. Boom. And over here, get those guys to cancel. Okay, so C, that's going to be the square root of this guy. Okay, so let's clear. We'll go ahead and do second square root, 121.46, and boom. So 11.02, let's go ahead and copy that down. But lastly, we're going to round to the nearest tenth of an inch. Imagine you're getting change back in 10 cents. Are we going to get $11 even or $11.10? Well, you have closer to $11, so that's where they round it down. And see, that's going to be the correct length for the diagonal here. In other words, the screen size for this device is 11 inches. So now you can bring a tape measure around your house and measure all of your screens, the height and the width, use Pythagorean theorem, and just verify what all your screen sizes are. Sounds like fun. Here's a video on solving equations if you want some more practice with those. Check out my website for practice problems just like these and others as well. Let me know what questions you have, what else you want me to cover. Good luck, you got these. We'll see you in the next video. Toodles!